Hey guys, this is Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric here. I want to talk to you today about GFCIs and the new 2014 code book, which is the National Electric Code Book. Um, basically, 210.8, they're talking about that GFCIs, which stands for a ground fault circuit interrupter. Most people say GFI for slang. Um, what that means is that if the GFI senses anything with the milliamps between four to six, it'll trip and it'll take out um, the ungrounded conductor, your hot, so it does not have any more current running to the, so the load side, the supply side of what it's feeding, such as maybe a small appliance or other receptacles. Uh, but it does sense the neutral to, to hot and also your ground to hot, so it's looking for a ground fault and then it interrupts the circuit to kill it. Um, GFCIs are really important. My, what I've heard is that they came out somewhere in the 70s, but the code used to state that in a kitchen for residential, which is what this is talking about in 210.8, for 120 volt circuits, residential situations, um, that it was only in just serving the counters, like a wet bar or a mud sink within six foot or a kitchen. Now they're stating that when they adopt that this summer, that they're going to require the microwave, the refrigerator, dishwasher disposal, compactor, um, if the ice machine is separate from the refrigerator, like a sub-zero situation, or you got two refrigerators or a freezer, um, anything that's in a kitchen, they're requiring, even if there's a second garbage disposal under a peninsula or an island that it's feeding as well, um, regardless if you have a wet bar and you got a microwave there, they're treating that the whole area should be GFI. Um, my thought is part of this is because of loft apartments that have cement floors. Um, people might throw a throw rug, typically in residential, in a lot of situations, you're gonna see wood floors, uh, composite materials, uh, fake wood floors, tongue and groove carpet, as well as linoleum. These items kind of help you keep from becoming uh, completed in the circuit because you're not grounding out on a, on a cement area but loft apartments that have cement floors, there is no way to get around that. But bottom line, guys, we're going to have to start GFIing everything. And a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't want to do that. The problem is, guys, is regardless of your pocketbook, we have to update our code according to what is safe for the customer. And what we're liable for, according to Article 90, authority having jurisdiction as well as just the contractor doing the work, what we know and what we have to take our new test every three years to update our code book, um, this is what we're liable to do. So regardless of how you feel about it, make sure you get your bids in before you decide to start tearing your kitchen out. Make sure your permits are pulled on your kitchens in your cities and your local jurisdictions. When you call us up and say, hey Josh, we're just changing a couple things and I show up and see all your walls ripped out, a load bearing wall with a two by four and all these wires hanging, guys, that is not just doing something minor. And nowadays, a lot of your cities, when you go ripping out your cabinets um, and you're changing anything they they expect you to cut into drywall since the tile's gone and update your circuits i have gone into homes where people have literally not had but one circuit or two circuits feeding the whole kitchen and i had one just last month in denver and uh, not only was that circuit feeding everything in the kitchen but it was feeding five other rooms and it was done by a bad wireman or somebody on a on, on a weekend or a holiday work which is what i call my weekend warriors um, guys, not to stand on my soapbox, but your responsibility as a consumer is to make sure that they're licensed and insured. And if you don't do your homework based on their credentials and also what they're doing, it is not okay just to hire a handyman to do the work. Handymen are not licensed as contractors. You need to go on Dora.com for Colorado, the Department of Regulations of Authority. They state in there who is licensed and who is not for plumbers, electricians, um, HVC technicians, um, as well as other you know, uh, uh, professions such as a chiropractor and doctors and dentists, they state them as well. So everybody that is registered through the state to do professional work and professional licensing should have them listed if they have any offenses against them, as well as if um, the person has uh, credentials that are up to date or they have defaulted in any areas of their license. So I just want to make it known that, that, that because you know this, you are responsible as a homeowner to pull the proper permits, to make sure you know what your city includes and, 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 and desires. And I do travel a lot in Colorado and do a lot of work in a lot of cities. 
And most cities state that when you're pulling these things apart, you need to update your, your appliances and your circuits to code before you go drywalling and, and tiling again. If you don't, that's your heartache when you sell your home because when you sell your home nowadays, they are going to catch you. And uh, you, know, you, you can't really cry about it later. Thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll see you next week.